Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Death Row Diner here at Catastrophe Society. I'm your host, Danny. I hope that you guys are going to enjoy this as much as I am. I've been really excited about this, really nervous, but I'm really intrigued by the concept that everyone has a last meal, but not everyone gets to choose theirs. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to go through each week and talk about um, an offender on death row and what they chose as their last meal. So we're going to talk about their crimes, talk about their story, and then I'm going to eat and review what they chose as their final meal. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm a really picky eater. So we're just going to see how it goes. But today we're going to talk about Stephen Wayne Anderson. Now I picked him because he actually was born in St. Louis, Missouri, which is not far from me at all. But he's a pretty interesting guy and how he was caught was, I don't know, just different. So Stephen Wayne Anderson kind of had a rough childhood. He really had to step up and be the father figure for his younger brother. His dad was really abusive. His mom was really mentally abusive. And at age 14, his mom actually kicked him and his brother out. So they had to spend a lot of time couch surfing. They had to spend time with friends and family. They ended up really kind of migrating from St. Louis out to the West Coast. And it really, I mean, he wasn't set up for success. He ended up living a life of crime. He kind of became like a contract killer of sorts. And it wasn't very long before he was actually arrested and then spent some time in prison. So he actually ended up in Utah State Prison. He was arrested for aggravated burglary in 1971 for one count and then three more counts in 1973. So he, he just had a history, I guess, of being caught. Now, while he was incarcerated, he actually assaulted another inmate. Then he murdered another inmate and he assaulted a corrections officer. So he's just a busy guy. He's got a lot going on. And I just, I think he has a preferred crime. He likes, he likes to burgle. He's a burglar. So he was born in 1953. Should have started with that. I didn't. But 1953 is when he was born, 1971, 73, that's when he starts to get in trouble and charged with crimes. So from there, he actually got out of prison. He escaped. So he's on the run. He escapes Utah State Prison in 1979, like November, around Thanksgiving. So he escapes and he's on the run. He's out of here. So he ends up fleeing. He makes it to California. And it's not very long after he gets out that it's like May of 1980 that he commits his next crime. So he's in California and it's just after like midnight and he goes to Elizabeth Lyman's home. Now he's there to get some money. He's on the run. He needs, he needs cash to fund his adventures. So he breaks into his home. It's just after midnight. He cuts the phone line. He's prowling through the house. He's looking for goods. Now he found like less than a hundred dollars. He, he didn't find much at this particular home. Now the homeowner is 81 year old retired piano teacher, Elizabeth Lyman. And as he's prowling through the home, she wakes up and it startles him, they say. And he shot her in the head at a very close range. Um, at the time, forensics said it was somewhere between eight to 20 inches. To me, that's less than two feet. That is very close. Um, that's not like a random shot into the dark. Oh, I'm scared of someone. That seems really close range to me. But what happens after that is what I think is even weirder. So he's now murdered someone. He covers her body up with a blanket and he heads to the kitchen where he cooks himself a snack. This is sometime after midnight. Maybe it's 1 a.m. He cooks himself noodles and eggs, sits down to eat, turns on the TV, and just chills. He stays there. Now, 
some neighbors had heard like some dogs barking. They felt like something suspicious was going on. They called the sheriff's department. He actually sat there and waited for them, just eating his noodles and eggs, watching TV until the sheriff's department arrives. They see what's going on. They arrest him. He's convicted and he's sentenced to death. Now, what's crazy is there were a lot of people that actually protested his death sentence pretty strongly um, because in the time that he was incarcerated, he actually wrote a lot of poetry. He actually wrote a, like a screenplay, like he wrote out a full play. Um, he had several different contests and like awards that he won for writing. Um, a lot of people felt like he had really turned himself around while he was incarcerated, that he truly had been rehabilitated. Um, and then, of course, there are other people who are like, eye for an eye, he's a murderer, he's got to go. So that's what I think is really interesting about this one. He escaped from prison, literally booked it out of there. He's on the run. And then when it came to committing this crime, he just hung out and just waited to get caught. I think that is what really intrigues me about this case in particular. I just cannot fathom how he just wanted to hang out. He, I feel like he wanted to get caught. Maybe not. Maybe he's just really out there. So he was executed in 2002 on January 29th. And this is what he requested as his last meal. Now, I mean... Just at first glance, to me, this is a really weird last meal. This is not a very exciting last meal. This really reminds me of like school cafeteria food, to be honest. Now, I don't have the exact amounts of everything that he wanted because he ordered kind of a lot of food, but to each his own. So he requested two grilled cheeses, which... I love. I love a good grilled cheese. I don't know if that's what I would pick as my last sandwich, but that's what he wanted. A single slice of peach pie. In January, it wouldn't have been in season, so I feel like it's probably not that good. We're going to find out. He wanted a pint of cottage cheese. How anyone can get through more than a single bite of cottage cheese, I don't know. Hominy and corn. I didn't even know that hominy was a food until I looked at this. I really don't want to eat that at all, to be honest. It looks like the hominy pieces versus the kernels of corn. The hominy looks like teeth to me. It looks like molars and they're yellow. And honestly, thinking about it kind of makes me feel gross. And then he wanted radishes which I also kind of forgot was a food, to be honest, but that's what we're having. And then he wanted a pint of chocolate chip ice cream, which I think is the blandest kind of ice cream that you can get. But here we are. So overall, just as a, as a, a simple observation, I just don't think this is a very exciting last meal. I would want something, I don't know, maybe fancier. I don't know. I feel like I don't even know where to start because the only thing that I'm, I want to eat is the grilled cheese. So maybe I should save that for last since I don't really want any of this, but we'll see. Um, ooh, man. I'll start with a radish. We'll go with a radish first. I don't know that I've ever even eaten a radish. It kind of reminds me of carrots as far as like texture goes. I think it smells like some kind of cleaner and it's got skin on it. And now I'm wondering if I'm not supposed to have that on there or if I'm supposed to eat that. I don't know. We're going to see. Oh God, I really have to like hype myself up for this. Um, I don't even know. I, I can't even guess what this is supposed to taste like. Um, maybe it's like carrots. <laughs> so 
So I think that tastes like what um, the floor probably tastes like. I feel like if you walked into a grocery store and you licked the tile, that that's what radishes taste like. I don't like that at all. I don't think that I'll ever eat radishes again. Yeah, it tastes like the ground. 100% tastes like the ground. And I don't like the texture of it either. It's like kind of crunchy, but like wet. I'm mm -mm, not about it. I'm not eating it again. All of these radishes can go to waste because I don't think even with a dip that I would want to eat them, to be honest. Ranch dressing, nothing's going to make these taste better. They're cute to look at. Like, what a fun color. I'm not, mm -mm, no. Now, I, I really don't understand the purpose of cottage cheese. It's ugh, wet and chunky. I think that cottage cheese reminds me of, like, this is an accident. Like, it's not supposed to be like this. Something bad happened. One person was like, it's fine. I'll still eat it. And that's how we ended up with this. I don't know how he ate or who would ask for a pint of this before they meet Jesus. It's just, I, ooh, it smells like sour cream and it's, ooh, I'm not a big dairy fan anyway, but like, it looks like chunky yogurt. I really, <laughs> I really don't want to even take a bite of this. This makes me sad. I would much rather have like a slice of cake or barbecue chips over cottage cheese. Oh, I don't want to do it. I really don't want to do it, but I have to do it. I committed to doing it. Oh, I'm only doing one bite because I just can't. We might have to go to grilled cheese next because I, ooh, I got to really hype myself up for this. I really don't want to eat really any more of any of this, but we're going to go. Ooh, I already know I'm going to not like it. Mm-mm. I don't know. Are you supposed to chew cottage cheese? Oh, everything. Yuck. I do not recommend cottage cheese to anyone. I can't believe people eat that for fun. Oh, yuck. I've got goosebumps. Mm -mm. I would not. I would not do it. I don't have high, I don't have high hopes for any of the rest of this now. Um, I don't know really. Okay. So let me, let me tell you about this hominy and corn thing. I really didn't know hominy was even like a thing, but this is like the regular, like kernel of corn. It's like this big. Look at this hominy stuff. It's massive. It looks like a giant molar and it's yellow and it's fluffy. And I've heard that it's supposed to taste like corn, but looking at it, I can't imagine that it is the same, but we're going to give it a go. I feel like this is going to be tolerable. If it tastes like corn, it's in the corn family. It probably tastes like corn. I'm trying to be brave for this one. I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. I just don't know about it. It is not the same as corn. Not at all. That's not corn. Hominy is not corn. Whoever said that to me is a liar. It feels like cauliflower. It feels like mushy, fuzzy, fluffy cauliflower. But corn also is with it. I feel really, I feel sad. This is really sad. I'm going to have to eat something really good after this. It's, ooh, the texture of this hominy thing is like, I don't even know how to explain it. 
It reminds me of pears and cauliflower at the same time. It just is icky to me. Yuck. We're finally down to the good stuff. So grilled cheese, who doesn't love a good grilled cheese? But again, I just, it's not what I would pick to be my last meal. If I'm being real, it just is kind of like boring. What about like a good club sandwich or a BLT? Now this is a good grilled cheese too. It's like perfectly golden brown. Triangles are the best shape for a grilled cheese. Anybody who eats them as rectangles, gross. And every, every grilled cheese I feel like has to be cut. You can't just eat a whole grilled cheese. Like it has to be cut into a triangle or it's not a true grilled cheese. But, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see wanting more than one grilled cheese sandwich if this is the rest of what you're eating. Because this is gross, this is gross, and this is gross. Radishes, no. Cottage cheese, absolutely not. How many? Never again. It's just like, no. It's a no for me. Peach pie, again, I mean, I like peaches. But it's January, so like peaches are out of season. And if I'm gonna eat peaches, I'd really rather have peach cobbler. So much better. But I'm just gonna eat this peach pie. We're gonna see. I don't really like that the peaches are so like sticky looking, you know? I really only like the crust. These are like school cafeteria peaches. They're um, tangy, but like chewy and they feel like they're like sticky. This actually, this looks like egg yolk to me. Not a huge fan of the peach pie, if we're being real. It's fine. It's not like fabulous. And then he ordered a pint of chocolate chip ice cream. Now, I didn't realize that ice cream is getting really expensive. Like it's like $6 for a pint of ice cream. And I had to buy a whole pint of chocolate chip ice cream and I don't even like chocolate chip. I don't like that the chocolate is so hard inside the cold ice cream. And I just feel like there are way better flavors with way more stuff in them. like just plain chocolate pieces in vanilla ice cream. It's just very boring, very basic. I feel like you could do better. I'd rather eat chocolate chips by themselves and vanilla ice cream by itself. I don't know why I don't like it together. I think it's because it makes the chocolate like cr crunchy. And then it reminds me of like bones or something. It's a texture thing for me. I'm not into it. It's fine. It's just. I wouldn't want this on my very last day. It's not what I would want. So if I were to scale this on a one to 10, it's not that it's like inedible. It's just that I think all of it is gross, except for the grilled cheese. I really do like the grilled cheese and the pie is okay. So he picked one, two, three, four, five, six different items. Of the six items, to me only two of them, okay, 50% of them are tolerable. The grilled cheese, the pie, the ice cream, tolerable. Radishes, cottage cheese, and hominy, I would never eat again. Really hope nobody else picked these things. I have 52 death row diners planned out. I don't want cottage cheese or hominy to be on any of them. I'm really hoping. Ooh, yuck. 50% of it being edible. I'm going to say let's start at a 5 out of 10. But let's take down a point because it's just boring. He didn't pick very exciting things. <sighs> We're going to say it's a 4 out of 10. This meal is a 4 out of 10. Mm. I wouldn't recommend this as a last meal, to be honest. 
Mm -mm. There's not even a star of the show. Because grilled cheese is good. But it's like... Everybody eats grilled cheese. It's like ramen noodles. If you want to impress me with a sandwich, like I said, I want like a BLT or like a steak sandwich or something that's more than like bread, cheese, bread. I don't know. I wouldn't recommend it. Four out of ten. Stephen Wayne Anderson, though, I do think it's a really interesting case. I just can't get over the fact that he he just sat there and waited to get caught. How did he get out of prison? He escaped Utah State Prison and then was like, oh, well, I'll just hang out here until I get caught. I think that's crazy. I mean, we'll never understand. But if you haven't looked into him, you should definitely look him up. He wrote several different poems that were published. Um, he actually became really kind of, I don't want to say like, popular but a lot of people like there was an entire like candlelight vigil in the freezing cold in January um, hoping that he would get clemency of course it wasn't granted um, but there was a big push for that a lot of people were really upset that he was sentenced to death um, you know and to each his own everybody's opinion they're entitled to their own but I don't feel like poetry and a play exempts you from the consequences of your actions. But again, just to review, four out of 10, I don't recommend this meal to anyone. We'll see how it goes. I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me. Um, like I said, I'm hoping that this is a weekly thing that we're able to put out. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to share all these different stories with you and my podcast is gonna be launching soon. So keep an eye out for that. If you haven't already, follow me at Catastrophe Society on TikTok, Instagram, and our YouTube channel, of course. So thanks for your time. I hope you have a meal better than this for your next meal. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy.